Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to take a look back at the past two Tomb Raider titles in preparation for the upcoming Shadow of the Tomb Raider game. And yeah, don't worry, I'll be doing comparisons for Shadow of the Tomb Raider as well once I get the actual game. But in the meantime, I wanted to take a look at 2013's Tomb Raider reboot and how it stacks up to its sequel, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now, I fully expect Rise to look much better due to progression of technology and benefits of already having a solid engine to work off of. But a lot of times there's some interesting downgrades or noticeable shifts in artistic direction that are worth pointing out. Just to clarify, both titles are running at their highest visual settings on the PC platform, with a native 1440p resolution, and again, this video will focus primarily on graphical comparisons. But if you want to know more about the gameplay, story, and mechanics, make sure to stay tuned because I have a big project set to release early in September that details the full history of the Tomb Raider franchise. And I'm really excited to share that video with you guys. But for now, let's focus on these first two games, starting with texture and model complexity. The original Tomb Raider used some pretty decent texture work in its environment, but Rise of the Tomb Raider has built on that, introducing other elements on top of the already nicely done high resolution textures. These grass sprites, for example, really add a lot to the scene in the more forested areas, and introduce a more believable environment to the player. Now of course, these are still just sprites, so viewing them from an aerial view will likely break the illusion, but it's still a nice touch either way. On top of this, textures on various surfaces like rock walls are improved with better world geometry on top of sharper texture quality. We can see the same thing here with these wooden boards. The smaller and more complex geometry in the boards lends itself to an overall more complex image that helps to add a new level of realism to the scene. Though, Tomb Raider 2013 still holds up well with its excellent texture designs. Now, let's take a moment to focus on the Lara Croft character model specifically. Here's where there's a lot of changes, most notably the facial structure. The original 2013 model of Lara Croft was made completely from scratch, with advanced animations made possible using compiled performance capture techniques, and the face was modeled after professional model Megan Farkar. Lara Croft in Rise of the Tomb Raider uses a more sophisticated form of motion capture technology, with the voice actress for Croft, Camilla Luddington, having a fluorescent paint sprayed onto her face that provided thousands of reference points for realistic capture. The captured footage was then edited to make it more natural for the game model, and as a result, her face looks much different from the one designed in the 2013 game. Many state that she looked better in 2013, but what do you guys think? It's also worth noting that both games, at least on the PC platform, allow for a cool feature called Tress FX that gives Lara realistic hair physics. This setting looks great in both games, even if there are a few downsides occasionally, and also, how is it she's so beat up but her hair looks absolutely perfect all the time? One nice touch added in Rise of the Tomb Raider is how snow particles will actually accumulate on Lara's hair. Speaking of snow, let's talk about the excellent snow tessellation in Rise of the Tomb Raider. Obviously, there's no form of this in the first game as there were no real sections with deep snow, but it's an amazing effect in Rise of the Tomb Raider that, while not perfect, really does make for a more immersive experience as Lara struggles to move through deep snow. In terms of actual character movement, both games look great. There's some awkward jumping animations that allow the player to change direction in mid-air, but the overall design looks great in both games, and there's some slight improvements to various set animations in Rise. Now for a look at each game's lighting quality. Lighting is kind of hit or miss with these newer Tomb Raiders. Sometimes it looks phenomenal, especially during night scenes with fire effects and enemies holding flashlights. In some of the more linear sequences in Rise, it looks phenomenal. But these games often give the player free reign over a slightly open world area, and these areas are often devoid of color variety, and there's no dynamic time of day. This means most of the lighting is pre-baked and simple. It doesn't necessarily look bad, but it's not the most impressive game in terms of lighting. One thing that's worth noting though is the difference in bloom effect. Tomb Raider 2013 used this effect a bit too liberally, and it didn't look right on many of the metallic objects in the world. Rise of the Tomb Raider doesn't rely as heavily on this effect, but it can still be found occasionally, especially when reflecting light off of wet surfaces. Shadows look soft and realistic in both titles, but feature a bit more detail in Rise of the Tomb Raider. Both games suffer from some aliasing shimmer, but it's generally not noticeable unless you look for it. Effects are a big part of these Tomb Raider games, and things like fire and smoke look phenomenal in both titles. Rise of the Tomb Raider benefits from some excellent snow effects as I mentioned earlier, though its fire effects don't seem to be on par with the excellent fire in 2013's Tomb Raider. It could have just been the few examples that I tested, but things like this pyre just look a bit off. But Rise makes up for it with its excellent volumetric smoke and haze design, especially in the geothermal valley. Walking around the forest in Rise is a surreal experience, with a light haze and fog displacing light and making the environment glow realistically. 
Tomb Raider 2013 uses this slightly, probably because it's a different type of environment, but it does feature some nice particle effects like falling leaves that Rise doesn't seem to offer. And then we get to water. This one was surprising to me, as it's one of the few areas where Tomb Raider 2013 actually looks a bit better. I tried to find similar bodies of water in both games, but they're both very different from each other due to different currents and sizes, but take a look at what happens when you jump into this huge body of water in Rise. Absolutely nothing at all. No ripples or anything. It's not like the effect is gone entirely, you can see it in some of these smaller bodies throughout the game. But Tomb Raider 2013, at least in this larger body of water, seems to function nicely with realistic water rippling and effects. And finally, let's wrap this up with a sound comparison. Now keep in mind that both games offer different environments, and the difference in terrain complexity might impact the sound design choices. But we're going to start with a look at ambient sound effects, and then I have a few similar weapon gunshots to compare. Which game do you guys think sounds better? And that wraps up this visual comparison. What do you guys think? Did Rise of the Tomb Raider improve on everything, or were there some things you liked better about the older game? Let me know in the comments section, and make sure to stay tuned because I have a ton of Tomb Raider related content coming, including a full history of the franchise, detailed review for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, benchmarks using the new RTX technology, and a follow-up comparison of the visuals in the game. Thank you all for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this posted every week.